Hello, my name is David Izumo. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer with Live Action. Today, I'll be reviewing Live Action's new PFR v3 configuration wizard. With the release of Live Action version 4.1, we were first to market for IWAN, PFR v3 monitoring, and analysis capabilities. And I encourage you to go to liveaction.com to review other videos that we created to deep dive into those user workflows. Now, fast forward several months, and now Live Action 4.2 offers full bootstrap configuration for PFR v3 within the application. Thankfully, PFR v3 is light years ahead of PFR v2 in terms of ease of deployment. And I can say that personally because PFR v2, boy, that offered a lot of challenges for me personally to get a failover setup to work consistently within my lab at Live Action. It required the network administrator to set up master controller policies at every site within the enterprise. So this master controller here in San Jose, you would also have to set up that another policy in Los Angeles and New York and every other site within the enterprise domain. Now, PFR v3 takes advantage of EIGRP SAF or Service Advertisement Framework to allow the user to set a standard policy right here at the hub master controller at our main data center in San Jose. And that policy will automatically get distributed to the various sites out in Los Angeles, in this example, as well as New York. Now, if you had hundreds or thousands of sites, just imagine how much simpler it would be to deploy PFR v3 as opposed to PFR v2. Now, to launch the PFR v3 wizard, configuration tool. You would simply click on the dashboard in the upper left hand corner here in Live Action and that'll bring up the dashboard uh, for Live Action. We're going to be focusing our attention on the WAN PFR tab in the dashboard. To launch the PFR v3 configuration wizard simply click on this link in the tree on the left hand side. That's going to automatically bring up a seven-step wizard process to walk you through the configuration of PFR v3. Now, this feature is meant to run in a greenfield environment, and also it assumes that all the routing, the underlying routing, is already cared for and configured within the system. So first off, in step number one, we're going to choose the hub routers. In this case, first off, the hub master controller. You can simply use this dropdown and choose the hub master controller or click on this ellipsis button on the right hand side and that'll bring up our advanced selection for devices. You can use search terms in this case, I'll look for MC and automatically look for that MC or you can take advantage of live action semantics and type in San Jose for example and we're going to look for all the San Jose devices and in this case choose the master controller. We can also then search for the hub border routers in this lower section. Again, I'm going to look for HQ devices and select these two border routers at the hub. Press next to continue. We're loading in the running configurations of these devices to get our bearings within live action. Step number two, we're going to set the master controller hub settings. We'll choose the domain name first, and in this case, this example, I'll just call it domain one. You can likewise also set a password. Uh, so I'll set the password to be Cisco in this case. And this password just simply allows for authentication and communication securely between the master controller and the border routers at various sites. Click on this checkbox to enable PFR NetFlow. This is key for gaining greater visibility within Live Action and to monitor and analyze PFR v3 within the application. You can also optionally choose to load balance. This source interface is simply the loopback of the devices of that master controller within the hub. Click next to continue. Now we'll choose the border router settings. 
And again, these border routers were selected in step number one. Choose the source interfaces for these border routers, and typically it's going to be a loopback address. So Live Action automatically looked for loopback addresses and auto populated and selected them here. Choose the WAN tunnel interface as well. As you recall, PFR v3 uses DMVPN. So these are the tunnel interfaces that you'd like to set up for your various service providers. Again, Live Action automatically chooses tunnel interfaces for you. The first tunnel interface in this case is Tunnel 100 and Tunnel 101 at these various border routers. Now set the service provider that's associated with these various border routers. So the first border router is connected to the internet service provider. The second border router is connected to MPLS. Click Next to continue. Now here is where we get into the real meat and potatoes of PFR v3. We're going to dive into the performance policy for PFR. The PFR policy will be tied to classes associated with DSCP values. So click on this button in the upper left hand corner to add a class. So first off, we're going to add a traffic class for voice and video. Press OK. Also, another traffic class for class critical. And then finally, another class for best effort traffic. Now, these classes can be moved up or down within this list to identify priority uh, within PFR, within the performance policy. So it's going to, PFR is going to look at each of these classes in order first, based off of the traffic classes that's defined. So it's going to evaluate voice and video first with sequence number 10 in the background, critical with sequence number 20, and best effort with sequence number 30 in this order. So for voice and video, we'll choose DSCP value, EF, or 46 add the match statement, and Live Action allows you to set the policy for this DSCP value in class voice video. A custom policy allows you to choose your own custom thresholds for this particular class and DSCP match uh, statement. So in this case, we can set loss to 5% or 50% or whatever you'd like. Or you can choose built-in policy profiles built into iOS. So in this case, I'm going to choose the voice profile. Notice that Live Action automatically shows you those thresholds as it's tied to iOS itself. You can also choose another DSCP value and associate it to this class. In this case, we'll choose 45. Add that match statement and it will automatically choose the same voice profile that we set above. Now, for the voice profile, we want to actually tie it to a performance policy for path selection, intelligent path selection. So you'll click on this checkbox on the bottom. The primary service provider will be MPLS. The backup, the fallback will be internet in this example. We'll do the same for class critical. In this case, we'll use AF31. Add that match statement and use the low latency data profile. Again, it's automatically shown for the thresholds for this low latency data profile. The path selection again, we'll choose MPLS as the primary, fall back to internet. For best effort, we'll choose DSCP0, add that match statement, and the policy there will be the best effort policy built into iOS. In this case, I'm not going to choose a path preference, but just allow PFR to identify which service provider is performing best and automatically put that traffic over that service provider. By default, we'll save these classes as application groups within Live Action so that you can monitor all of these classes and identify the thresholds so that Live Action can monitor both the performance as well as general application statistics for PFR v3 in our WAN PFR dashboard.
So you want to ensure that these classes are tied to appropriate app groups so that the thresholds are automatically set to ensure that the workflows within the dashboard are, um, are factual and matches the exact classes and applications that we're identifying within PFR v3. Press Next. This just shows that we're going to be updating the app groups with new information. Press OK. And now we'll select the branches. Again, we're presented with an advanced selection tool here. So I'm going to just search for everything called branch and choose my two branches in Los Angeles and New York, identify the loopback addresses for these devices. And in this case, all of these branches are set to source from loopback zero. Press next, we're reading in the running configuration of these branches, we're identifying all of the current state of these devices, and now we're presented with a way to review the final configuration before Live Action pushes out the PFR v3 performance policies and config throughout the enterprise. Click on Preview CLI, and now we can identify everything that will be pushed from Live Action to these various devices. So here's the master controller configurations that we'll be pushing. An example of a border router at the hub. And then also our branch router, an example configuration that we'll be pushing based off of what we set within the wizard to the branch in Los Angeles. Everything looks good. I'll press close, click next to automatically push these CLI commands down to the router. Press OK to confirm. So now we're configuring the devices, making an SSH connection to each one of those devices and pushing down those CLI commands. The configuration was successful. Click Finish, and now we're done. Now we'll go back to the topology and notice this was the state before we configured PFR version 3. Basic routing was kicking in. Yeah, so critical applications like uh, those traffic classes marked EF and AF31, it's just being moved between or just being routed over internet and MPLS based off of basic routing, in this case EIGRP. Now, we're going to refresh this and allow for all of the NetFlow to be updated within the system topology, and we'll identify how PFR v3, the performance policy, will now route all of the critical applications over the MPLS path. So we're going to give it some time, and I'll be back very shortly. So now after giving PFR a little bit of time to distribute the policy across the various uh, routers within the domain, the branches in Los Angeles and New York, for example, after doing a refresh in the live action topology, we can confirm that all that critical applications marked EF and AF31, all of that is now going over the MPLS path in conjunction with a PFR performance policy that we just configured. Let's also verify this a little bit further by using the built-in filter that we created in live action to look for voice and Citrix applications we're querying the backend database, and now notice that all of that traffic, EF and AF31, is going over the MPLS path. So it was that simple, using live action to configure PFR v3 in this domain environment, and we can also even click on these individual devices, and notice how we're getting PFR NetFlow directly from these devices. So. Gone are the days that you have to simply always look at show domain commands. You can go to live action, look at these real-time reports in the device view, and identify PFR traffic. Likewise, you can now use the dashboard to even further troubleshoot PFR and identify how your various sites, your applications, and your service providers are being utilized within the network. Thank you very much for watching, and we look forward to working with you further on any IWAN PFR deployments within your customer domain.